Okay, so yesterday I kind of mixed my Thursday and Friday schedule, so I'm going to do what I have left over. Quick demonstration of what I'm going to be doing, and then I'll go through and do it. So the first one I'm going to be doing looks something like this. It's called Reverse Dog. All right, I'll be doing that for, uh, let's see, three minutes. And then the next one is Shoulder Pow, where I reach behind my back and try to grab my arms. And I'll be using a strap for that. So if you're going to do this, you might need a strap or a belt. And then I'm going to finish with Twister, which looks something like this. So I'll be doing those. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Reverse dog. So start in a tabletop position. Take both your hands, externally rotate them, or the right hand goes one way, the left hand goes away. So the thumbs go up and out. And then set them down, and here you go. Now, this is a highly leveraged pose. And chest, I don't want you hitting my arms when I'm doing this, okay? Hi, buddy. You gonna help me? Alexa, three minute timer. <clears throat> Hello. Per -per. <laughs> if you're watching still, so let's go through the principles. Wet noodle. I try to get everything that I can relaxed. So like my legs are relaxed, my shoulders are generally relaxed. Obviously, my arms are not, my hands are not. And notice in these case, this case, my arms are not wet noodle, but they're straight. So I'm not really using my arms. I'm using the skeletal structure. So I'm good here. And this is a highly leveraged pose. What that means is, I mean, I've got all I need right here. I could possibly stand up into, say, a plank pose or an actual down dog, but I don't need to. I've got more than enough going on right now. What I will do though is slowly as I go through this pose, I slowly slide back and just increase it a little bit. Like right there, that moved the feeling all the way up to my elbows, whereas before it was maybe just mid forearm. The highly leveraged poses, you might do them for less time. Notice I'm doing this for three minutes. You're, you're hitting my hand with your tail, buddy. That's okay. Breathe to relax. So wet noodle, breathe to relax. So a couple things about the breath. One thing one. Breathe in for a count of four, breathe out for a count of eight. So double the out exhale time to the inhale time. That will slowly over time reduce your heart rate and it tends to emphasize the sympathetic nervous system. Now, it's not, that's not entirely the case. If you do something like one second in, two second out, you're going to be doing too many breaths. So also try to keep it to about five, six breaths per minute. So we breathe to relax, four, eight breathing, wet noodle. And then the last part is tension, passive tension, or as passive as you can get over time. And that time, minimum two minutes, generally speaking, maximum five. Don't bounce, don't pull. Alexa, stop. And when the timer stops, come out slowly. So I, first of all, I come up a little bit, and right there, that's relaxing. Oh, boy. And then I'm not going to bend my wrist. I'm just going to lift my arms, let the wrist fall naturally. And then what I tend to do is I tend to just sort of let gravity do something until I can close my hands. And that's pretty much it. I'm going to go ahead and just twist my wrist a little bit. Okay, next is shoulder pow. For shoulder pow, I'm going to use a strap. I've got this like this so I can basically loop the hand and pull it up. Uh, for this one, sometimes I use the wall to push my elbow back. I'm not going to do that, though. So I'm going to do this at a bit of an angle. 
actually to the side so you can get an idea of what's going on. All right, so I'm going to start with my right hand on top, so I'll do it this way. Hand behind, put it through the loop. Now I'm going to pull it this way and then pull it up. And I'm going to pull it one more time this way. And then I'm going to pull it up. Alexa, three minute timer. So, whichever elbow's on top, mine is right, point it up, maybe push it back with your head a little bit, not much, and the bottom one is pulling up. So, my left shoulder is hyperextension. My right elbow is inflection. My left elbow is inflection as well. Yesterday I did uh, pins and needles, and one of the things about pins and needles is you put your shoulders behind your, your back in a reverse prayer. That's one of those things that loosens up the shoulder and allows you to slightly more hyperextend. I can touch my fingers. That's better than when I started for sure. This is an asymmetrical pose, so there's a right side and a left side. The great thing about asymmetrical poses, as I've said a million times, give or take, is you can do one side longer than the other. This is one of those where my left side is definitely not as right, flexible as my right side, so I might consider that, though I'm not at the moment. But I might do, say, the left side for four minutes and the right side for three minutes. Add a minute to one side to move towards balance. Moving towards balance, it's not getting balanced, it's moving towards balance. Balance is a journey, not a destination. That is, you're never going to get there. You're going to overshoot it, you're going to undershoot it, but we work towards balance and symmetry over time. Balancing yin and yang. In and out, soft and hard. Fast and slow. What I'm going to do this time is, on the second version, so when I do the other side, I will actually use the wall, both to demonstrate a way to do it, as well as getting a little bit deeper. I won't use the wall the entire time, but I'll use it to give me a bit of an assist. Alexa, stop. Okay, let that arm, the back arm, whew, the arm that's hyperextended, I have to let slowly down. Okay. Okay, other side. And I'm going to use the wall. So let's see. Left hand drops the cord. I'm going to Pull sideways. And up. Alexa, three minute timer. Okay. To put top elbow against the wall. Press it back. So this replaces the need for the cable a little bit. Go ahead and There anyway. Now, I'm just letting my body weight do this. Be careful uh, that you don't compress your ulnar nerve. So I'm not going to do this for very long. 
and I'm also moving it around a bit. Okay, I'm gonna use that as enough. That gave me a bit of a cheat. There we go. <clears throat> Pardon me. Hi. It for now. I can use it over here. Let's get this wood too. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Is that right, Kitty? Alexa, stop. Okay. Is that now you, sir, are going to be slightly in the way? Okay. I won't step on you, probably. Okay, twister. Twister is a deep twist. Uh, Science of stretching does lack uh, twisting, but honestly, there's sufficient twisting with that plus bagua. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do twister. For twister, I'm going to lay on my back. I'm going to put my foots, my feet above chest, but they'll ultimately not hit them. You're fine, dude. So I'm going to take, say, my right foot and leg and lift it, and I'm going to put it over. You might just put the hook, the foot behind, but I'm going to actually put it over. Then I'm going to lift, and I'm going to lean to the side. And this is fine. You might be able to wrap your foot around. There we go. I got my foot wrapped around, but that doesn't matter. Alexa, five-minute timer. sliding a little bit and it's harder to keep that so I'm gonna go ahead and let that go my socks are sliding so it's harder to keep things twisted so let me go. there we go my other side doesn't twist yet if you're a yoga person and you ever do eagle eagle pose where you cross one arm under the other so eagle pose put your arms like so I'm not sure if you can see that. And then you do the same thing with your legs. This pose will actually help you do the legs part of eagle. So this is a breakdown of eagle on the on your back. 
there's no reason why you couldn't, in fact, cross your arms and do a, 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 uh, let's see, an anterior leaning eagle or eagle on your back. I'm slightly extending my elbow more than I want, so I'm going to turn my hand over so I'm not actually bending my elbow beyond 180 degrees. As you're doing this, scan your body. Like right now, I'm noticing some nice pressure right here in the glute. So I'm getting that hip. All of this area here is tight, or less tight, but and so this is loosening up here nicely. Certainly my back. So there's places you might feel it. Uh, sometimes when I cross my legs, it starts to hurt my ankle or the bones over there. So, you know, monitor pressure points. And if a pressure is a point as opposed to an area. So if I can point to an, like a joint or point to like my knee, that's bad. Stabby pain, generally bad. Point pain, generally bad. Back off. I'm not putting pressure. I'm just resting my hand here. The weight is pulling it down a little bit, but I don't actually need to do that. So it's just a place to put my hand. I'm actually keeping my leg up a little bit. So I've got my fingers curled over and the weight is sort of pulling my leg up to keep it without, to keep it from sliding down. You can lay down there, buddy, but as soon as I twist back, you're gonna I'm gonna crush you. I won't crush you, of course. I have to come back so slowly, he'll have time to get out of the way. When you're learning this stuff, I generally do not recommend having kitties or dogs around and if they're gonna be doing stuff like this. It's okay now. Don't see don't do that, dude. Don't start clawing me with your claws. That's not cool, dude. But I'll stop petting you for now. Alexa, stop. Okay, I'm going to uncurl my feet and slowly twist back. Here I come. You going to move, buddy? I'm going to crush you. I'm going to crush you. Will you please? Thank you. Good boy. Okay, other side. Left leg over the right. Left hand outside of left leg. Pull over. Actually, there we go. This side doesn't twist around as much. Let's see if I can get this twist. Okay, and that's as far as I'm going to get. Okay, Alexa, five-minute timer.
Notice my, my left foot is just flailing up. That's fine. The purpose is to keep this leg over. The, the left leg on the right leg keeps the right leg twisted. I'm not holding on to it. This is sufficient. And I'm getting more than enough twist right here. This is a slightly tighter side. Right here is where I'm feeling most of that, right here. Something I haven't talked about, I don't think, in these videos much. In the beginning of me doing these, my biggest challenge was boredom. And I mean that sort of like when you're meditating, you get bored, you get distracted. And what I found myself doing was I was often like, I just want to go to the next pose. But the problem is you have to put the time in. So impatience is a way your ego gets you to get out of the pose so you won't actually make progress. So dealing with boredom uh, or distraction or really it's aversion, you know. From a, like a Buddhist perspective, I'm averting, I, I'm avert, I have aversion to the discomfort and, that I'm in. I, I'm not in much, I'm not in discomfort right now, but some of the poses, especially like splits, are where I'm getting a lot of discomfort. Pins and needles, where I'm there for five minutes, my shins can often hurt quite a bit. Learning to know the difference, Alexa, stop. No, learning to know the difference between pain and discomfort is important. I'm going to come back Ooh, really slowly, very slowly. I was getting stretched all the way up in my shoulder there at the end. That's good. Okay, let's see. Let's see. I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of stretch, uh, split work. Okay, to do split work, this thing doesn't... Oh, actually, this will work. Okay. Let's see. Get my chair. Actually, I'm gonna I am gonna move this. Put this at an angle. Use this one. 
Okay. I'm not going to time this one. I'm just going to do it for at least at least five minutes. This is going to need to go a little bit further back. There we go. Okay, here we go. Right there, I'm starting to get a little bit further back on that heel. There we go. Okay. I've lost it. I need this to be symmetrical so I don't have an uneven amount of stretch. There we go. I should do it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start here. Just let this, let my hips start to open up and warm up. Why is it so hard to open up your hips? One, there's tightness. You know, we sit all day long. I used to do a lot of traveling, you know, 44 weeks a year. So I would sit on airplanes for hours and uh, hold my legs in basically so I wasn't touching the, pa the passengers on either side. And uh, over time, I tightened my hips up. That's one reason. But there's a biological imperative. So your body, your, your, the meat suit that we occupy wants to reproduce. So it's going to protect your groin. It's going to protect your heart. Spreading your legs is considered risky because you're exposing the reproductive organs. I know that's weird. I'm probably off the screen now that I think about it, but that's fine. So you have to convince your body that it's, it's okay. And it, it is okay. So right now, I'm not getting much of a stretch, but I have a lot of tightness right here. And so I'm getting a feel of there. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to push my back self back, open that up a little bit, relax down. So that's a lot more intense. Whoa, that might be too much or too fast. Nah, maybe okay. I have to imagine if you're actually watching this, which I'm sure no one's watching this at this point, this is at least as exciting as watching paint dry. The arch of my left foot, I can feel, I can feel uh, the arch of my left foot. So that means I've really got the ligaments, probably the, the let me think, tendons. I've got the tendons engaged, certainly, and I don't want to do too much of that. Because I'm trying to stretch the muscle bodies, the muscle bellies, the middle of the muscle, not, not the tendons, you know, where the muscle turns into tendon. Because a tendon is just a muscle with less visceral material in it, and it connects to a bone. So the muscles, as they get closer to the connection, become wider, less, less blood flow, and eventually they become pretty much just no blood flow. But since there's so little blood flow to the tendons and the ligaments, that's why you got to be really careful. You don't want to mess with them because if you, when you, if you injure them, it takes much longer for them to heal. All right, I'm slightly hyperextending both of my knees. I'm going to go ahead and come back a little bit, lower a little bit more.
supposed to see the clock. Alexa, what time is it? It's been about four minutes. Okay, so it's been about five minutes. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do... No, I'm not. I was going to do a round of PNF, but honestly, this is more than intense. I don't need to do any more than this. Though maybe that's why I should... I'm going to try it. What the heck? Okay. PNF, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. I'm going to push out a little bit. Oh, that was a bit fast. And I'm going to squeeze in. I'm squeezing in as much as I can on my heels until I get some, uh, there's a certain sensation I'm looking for where I'm trying to convince my nervous system that I'm about to tear my tendons and then they'll start to relax and then I can go further, but I haven't felt it yet. Okay, maybe there. That was a little bit better. That was not a great round of PNF, but it was okay. But that sure is intense right now. Oh, boy. How do I know if intense is too intense? There's sometimes when it's obvious. If I can maintain a voice like this, I'm not too distracted. I'm not cracking. I'm not whispering. It's probably okay. When you come out of a pose, if you notice pain for more than, say, 30 seconds, um, after you're out of the pose, then probably you went too far. Use that as feedback. You're going to go too far, and then you're going to have to learn to back off from that. Okay, I'm going to do something. I'm going to try something here.
Okay, I think I'm going to call that. So now, getting out of this post. Can come back. One leg at a time. Oh, boy. Okay, that leg's back. This leg's not back. Okay, that's it. I'm good. It just hurts a little bit to get back, but now that I'm back, I'm fine. So that was uh, about 10 minutes on the splits and then the other stuff. Uh, I'll probably do some more tonight, but uh, I enjoyed it, and I'm nice and loose. Have a good one. Have a good weekend. Bye.